Hey Cove, how are you guys doing today? Super excited to be able to teach with you guys again. I hope that you guys are having a good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever it may be. Um, super bummed that I couldn't see you guys this past Thursday. For those of you that don't know, normally we hang out on Wednesday nights at Christchurch Lake Forest. and We just hang out, we play games, break up into small groups. High schoolers are there, Miss Cat's with you, I'm with you. It's always a ton of fun. But this past Wednesday it got rained out, so we moved it to Thursday. But I couldn't come anyways because I was exposed to COVID. Um, I knew somebody that I was with a few times last week that has just tested positive for COVID. And as soon as I found out I got tested, they told me no matter what the results were, I had to quarantine for seven days. So come Sunday, I will be free. But until then, I am quarantining, even though I tested negative. So I don't have the virus, but I am still not allowed to go out with people which is kind of a bummer. I missed you guys on Thursday, and I hope that you guys had a great time with Miss Cat and the high schoolers. Um, anyways, though, I'm still able to teach, and I'm very happy for that. So as you guys remember, the month of July, we're going through the Book of Judges. And not really, I shouldn't even say we're going through the Book of Judges. We're looking at the Book of Judges and just looking at some of the judges um, from the book. Last week, we talked about Deborah, and the week before that, we talked about just the cycle and the general structure of the Book of Judges. And now, if you guys remember, I mentioned a cycle, and, it, and we, we, we observed that cycle for the first time in Deborah, starting with the people of Israel serving and obeying God, and then it moves to them turning away from God and sinning. And then, after once they sin, the Lord, deliver, the Lord allows them to be in captivity or overthrown by their enemies. And then, after that, when the people realize that the sin has trapped them and and they can't get out of it on their own. They call out to God. And call and, and God responds. Once they're in this part of this cycle, God responds because he is faithful and he, he hears the people that he loves and he can help and is and is able to help. He raises up a judge. And then that judge leads them out of captivity and the people and then he in turn leads the people to serve and obey obey God. So that's the quick cycle of judges that goes on and on and on throughout hundreds of years in the first in the first few centuries of Israel once they come into the promised land. So that brings us to Gideon. Um, if you guys remember last week we talked about Deborah who was this just awesome prophet slash judge leader of Israel. Um, she led them out of out of captivity and led them into 40 years of peace. But at the end of chapter 5, we see that they are in peace, but then the start of chapter 6, which is where Gideon's story picks up, we see that the, the Israelites have, com have completely left God again, and they are once again delivered um, into evil. And so the first verse of chapter 6, to, to set up the character of Gideon, it says this, The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. So as we see... At the end of Deborah's story, the people of Israel were here. They were they were in peace. They were serving God. They 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 weren't looking to other gods. They were here in the cycle. And then, just in two verses, or just in one verse, in the next chapter, we see that the people of Israel have forgotten Deborah. They have forgotten God, and they've turned away. And so because of that, they moved here and they started sinning and, and rebelling against God, which led them to this point right here, where they are under captivity and they are in need of a savior. And that's where the story of Gideon picks up. And as you, as you can see, we, we will go through this cycle again with Gideon, and then probably we'll go through the cycle again with the next person that we, that we study. So very interesting, um, and we continue to see God deliver us, and God be there and be faithful to us throughout all of this. So that brings us to Gideon. And to start out this story, when the people are in captivity, God sends a prophet to talk about their betrayal and how he was this God of that led them out of captivity, that brought them to the promised land, and they have forgotten. That is why they're under captivity. And that is why the Midianites are ruling over them. This is all in Judges chapter 6. And so then in chapter 11, we see that the, an angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and starts talking to Gideon. And, and he eventually tells Gideon, that you are a mighty warrior, and I am going to use you to defeat the Midianites and to bring Israel out of this captivity. 
once again because Israel has called out and you are going to be my focal point. And we see in, the, in these verses up to like verse like 18, 19, Gideon's like, God, you don't want me to do this. I'm from, I'm, I'm from the tribe of Manasseh, the weakest tribe of all. And I am one of the weakest people here. I'm the runt of my family. I'm the littlest. I'm the youngest. Um, you don't want to use me to, to overthrow Midian. Like it, if you have all of these plans, why would you choose me? And so that causes Gideon to doubt God. And, and to the point where he doesn't even believe that, that this person that he is talking to, this angel that he is talking to, is serving God, is, is, is God, is the word of God. He doesn't believe that this is happening. And so he says, God, I don't really trust what's going on right now, so I'm going to set up a sacrifice. And if, if you truly are God, you will take this sacrifice. But I need to leave for a moment. So can you wait for me? And God says, yes, I will wait for you. In the midst of your doubt, um, while you prepare the sacrifice to, to confirm if I am real or not, I will wait for you. And I wanted to stop and focus on that just because God will wait for you as well. As you are on your journey to discover him and, and to discover his ways and his will for your life, God will wait for you. And God will be there when you come back. Gideon leaves and he prepares something and he comes back and, and the angel is still waiting for, for, for Gideon. He's there waiting um, because it was important for Gideon that, that God remain there. And that's just who God is. He wants us to follow him. So he's willing to do what he what we need of him so that we will follow him. And, that, and that's what continues to happen in this story, which is really cool to observe. So he does this, and God accepts the sacrifice. And then God tells him, now that you know that you are this person that I have chosen, you, you are this mighty warrior, you will lead the people of Israel, I need you to do something. And he tells him that the people of Israel... One of the main ways that they rebelled against God and that one of the main things that caused them to fall into this captivity under the Midianites was because they had been making these idols, these things called high places, these poles that they would worship. They'd worship the God of Baal, which is just this, this God who supposedly would fertilize the land and, and bless the land. So that, that's the person that they turned to instead of God. And they would go to these high places and worship him. And so... God tells Gideon, you need to go and take down these high places. You need to take down this high place where you live because these people go to this place and look to Baal instead of looking to me. And so when you destroy this place, make an altar to me so that they know that whoever destroyed this wants, wants us to focus on God, and that this was an act for me, for God. And so he does it. Gideon gets some people at night. Um, and he t tears down the high place. He makes an altar to the Lord. And people get ticked when they wake up. And they realize that it is, it is Gideon who has done this. And they, they accuse him of, of taking down Baal, taking down these high places, not really caring about the land. If, if you truly want our land to be fertile, why would you tear down this high place? This God is going to, to bless this land. Why would you do that? And Gideon just pretty much says, if you truly believe that Baal is this powerful person, then, then he should be the one to defend his high places, and he hasn't. Instead, we should be focusing on God, because God has talked to me, and he's telling me that we need to break out of this cycle, and we need to turn to him. And so people realize that. They give Gideon this new name that pretty much says that he defiled Baal, and they start to follow Gideon. Which brings us to the next chapter. Um... Which brings us to the next point of the story, where God now tells Gideon, listen, you are going to be this person to lead the nation of Israel, my people, a ton of people against Midian, and you are going to drive out these people, um, and, and, and you are going to be blessed because of it. Which Gideon again starts to doubt, despite what God has done for him so far, how he's protected him with, with his first duty, he still doubts God. And he pretty much says, God, I need you to, I need you to do something for me. I need, I'm going to set out this fleece at night, and the dew is going to get it wet. And if the dew gets it wet at night, I will, I will follow you. And sure enough, that night, he lays out the fleece, the dew is wet. And then he goes, God, I need to, just, I need to triple check to make sure you are God and that I am your person. Um, I'm going to lay this out again, and everything else around it I want to be wet, but this fleece, I don't want it to be wet. And sure enough... The next morning, he goes outside, the, fl the fleece is dry, the ground around him is, is wet. And so he knows that God is, is going to be behind him and to be faithful to him. So Gideon 
calls up the men, the ranks of Israel, and he gets a crazy number. He gets 22,000 people to start to rally around him to fight the people of Midian. This person that God has risen up, this judge Gideon, has brought up 22,000 people. And so Gideon started to think, I really am this person that God that God is going to use. That I'm going to be the person to, to take down these high places and to, to draw out Midian and to point the people back to the Lord. And so when he has all these 22,000 people, the Lord comes to Gideon and does the unthinkable again. And he says, look, Gideon, this is too many people. We don't need this many people to, to take down Midian the, and the Midianites. We don't need this many people to, 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 um, for me to work. I don't need all these people. So you need to announce, tell the people that are afraid, that are trembling to fight, that they can go home. So Gideon gets up and he says this. And the number goes from 22,000 to 10,000. So just like that, 12,000 people, because they are afraid, they leave. And so just like that, more than half is chopped off of, of the ranks of the people that are going to fight for Israel. And then God does the unthinkable again. And he says, you know what? This number still is too high. I don't need all these people. And, and Gideon's like, what? And so he pretty much says, Gideon, have the men go down and get water. And those, and the guys that, that get on their knees and drink water from the river like a dog, tell them to go home. The people that take water from their hand and, and sip it like this, they can stay. And so sure enough, they go down and over over 9,000 people sip like this, or sip like this, uh, like a dog. <laughs> kind of a weird, weird, weird way to glean out people, but this is what happens. People start drinking the water with their tongues instead of bringing the water to to their mouths with their hand. Only 300 people bring the water to their hand, which means that Gideon is going to lead Israel out of captivity with only 300 men. Now let me ask this question. Do you think Gideon is going to and these 300 men are going to be the people to lead Israel out of captivity? Or do you think it's going to be God? At this point, God has orchestrated everything. He's inspired he's risen up Gideon. The whole reason that he's even there is because the people of Israel have called out to him. And he is this God, he's the same God who who delivered them out of Egypt, who who kept them safe throughout the wilderness and brought them to this promised land and cleared out all these people. Don't you think that he can also only use 300 people to to take out this this nation of people out of Israel? And that's what he's slowly teaching Gideon. He's showing Gideon that I am faithful to you. So if you show me just a little bit of faith, it'll go a long way. And so with these 300 people, that's exactly what happens. God shows how faithful he is to Gideon. And so pretty much they get, and we're in chapter 7 now, and they surround the people of, of Midian. And with the 300 people, they only bring pots and pans. They don't even have weapons. God is able to, God causes something in this camp of Midian to, to confuse the people. And then they see ranks surrounding and it's only 300 people but it's only one layer of people surrounding the people of Midian get so confused and scared they start attacking each other and just like that this this army of people that have been keeping Israel um detained and 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 snare the snare that that Israel pretty much brought on themselves they are destroyed because God confuses them God does the unnatural God does the supernatural to to work through Gideon and, and, and the people of Israel, the people that were faithful to him, to bring them out of captivity. And so we find peace. Gideon catches up with the with the Midianites who, who were like leading, and he kills them. And just like that, the people of Israel are free. And Gideon leads this, these people into peace. And I hope we know now, but these judges really aren't, they're not doing this by their own will. They're just simply vessels being used by God to, to, to free the people of Israel. And so with the story of Gideon, we see God work in unusual ways. Gideon will be the first to tell you, you don't want to use me. I'm a runt. I'm, I'm from Manasseh. I'm, I'm a weak link. I, I, you don't want to use me to, to rally people around. 
But God, you see, God doesn't look at the prejudices and the, and the stereotypes that this world works through. Instead, he, he looks in his eyes, through his eyes, and he knows that he can do anything with anybody. I mean, there's a story where God talks to somebody through a donkey. So if God can do something like that, if God can create the world, he can certainly work through a runt to, to inspire people to rally around God and, and free themselves. So again, we see the faithfulness of God through, through the story of Gideon. I wish that we had more time to focus on Gideon, but the cool thing is we can talk in depth about this on Friday. So if I've said anything that you want more clarification on, if you want more details, um, well, for starters, you could read the story. It's Judges 5 through 8 that you can read, and that's the story of Gideon that I just ran through really quickly. But also, I would inspire you, or I, I, I want to motivate you to, to, to come to, Cove, to the Cove Hangouts on Fridays. Mike and I, we, we talk about this. Um, we, have, we answer any questions that you might have. We also kind of run through the story again. We'd love to do that with you. So I hope to see you guys this next Wednesday. And I hope that you guys stay healthy. Um, and I hope to see you on Friday as well. All right. Uh, you know, I should pray first. Let, let me pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this. Another just an, another great opportunity to, to study your word and to learn about you. And to learn about how faithful you are to us, Lord. Because we are Gideon a lot of the times, Lord. Most of the time, we, we doubt you. We, we see um, our conflicts, our, our, our struggles through human eyes. And we, and we forget that you are God and, and you are above all of those things. You are above all of, our, all, all of our limitations, Lord. And you can work through any situation in any way that you want, Lord. And I pray that we can see that. And we can see that, that serving you is ultimately what we want to do. In your name I pray. Amen. So, I hope to see you guys this Wednesday and bring any questions that you guys might have for Friday. All right, guys, thank you so much, and have a great week.